to power this in, I think he might have to leave the blue to the corner. I don't think he can get anywhere near this blue to the middle. Well, this is tough. Just to pop the blue alone is a tough pot, but to try and get back for the pink as well needs perfect queuing. Oh, Seven tremendous feet. shot. Oh. Well, that for me is the shot of the championship so far. Wonderful pot. It just shows, Mike, how well he's queuing at the moment. It does. What a chance. He could steal this one. That blue That's alone deep. deserves to steal the frame. Well, this is Graham's character all coming out here. And Robin's got to be absolutely gutted. I know it's early in the session, early in the match, but what a wonderful clearance from Graham. Yes, tremendous clearance. Graham Dot taking the second frame, and he leads Robin Hall 2 0. I played terrible. I mean, I, I don't think. I don't think I played worse. Not just at the Crucible, just as a professional. I've played. I just couldn't put a ball. Can you put your finger on why that was? Why you were so flat? No, I've played bad all year. I've not really played that well the whole season, but normally when I come here, I play pretty well, but. You can't rely on playing well here all the time. You'd eventually do a stinker, but to, to play as bad as that's hard to understand. It's demoralising. It must be mentally very hard. I mean, at one stage at the end of the first session, he looked like he was going to win every frame and the possibility of a whitewash. I couldn't care less, to be honest, with the whitewash now. I, I just... I genuinely couldn't care less whether he won. What difference does it make? 10 nil or 10-1, it's still a drubbing. I mean, you have to put it into perspective. I lost 10-7 to Joe Perry here once, and he played... He played fantastic and I couldn't give him any more high praise. But he's beat me 10-1 there and he's played rubbish. And Joe's not played well at all there. And he'll come in and I'm sure he'll say he'll need to play a lot better to win his next match. So it's, it's hard to believe how bad I've actually played. Yeah, I mean, I think it was something like a 50-odd break was the highest, wasn't it? And, he's eight, and he's eight one up. I mean, it's, it's hard to believe. It's hard to believe. So do you have to just write it off and try and put it behind you? And, or what do you well, do? There's nothing else you can do. I mean, what, what, what can I do? I'm obviously not trying to play like that. But I think even if I was trying, I still would have struggled. Nothing went right either, but I mean, any time he did miss, not that it would have made any difference, because I played that bad anyway, but any time he did miss, he, he got away with it in the first session. With, and any time I got in, I landed awkward. Or I just couldn't get anything going. I mean, if there was ever a nightmare at Snooker, that was it. But you've turned around poor form before, haven't you? You can do it again, presumably. Yeah, well, <laughs> not right now, can I? No. I mean, I certainly don't feel I can turn it around just now. I feel as if I need to chuck it playing as bad as that, but... I'm sure I'll come back and I'll play okay again, but it's, I have no idea why I played as bad as that. What was going through your mind, Graham, then? I just wanted out. I just wanted out. I couldn't, I couldn't yeah. pot a ball. I couldn't hit the white. I just couldn't hit... I mean, if you told me to hit the white, I'd win a frame, I'd probably missed it. I just couldn't do anything. And it was actually more demoralising that Joe was playing so bad. I mean, if you can sometimes take it if somebody plays well, because everybody gets beat, but Joe was missing. And even at maybe... Like five now, I thought Joe's not really settled. He, he never looked up, he'd settled, he kept missing and leaving me in. It was, it was just a nightmare, I just couldn't pull the ball. Had you had enough of the match by last night? Did you come out today just thinking, I just want to get home? Oh, yeah. 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 I mean, you still come out trying to play. I mean, I get in right away in the first frame. And sure. Once I missed the black, I mean, if there was, if I wouldn't, I get fined, I'd have gave up. But, um, a lot of £250 fines for giving up, so. I just played on, but I just wanted Joe to my. I just wanted Joe to keep potting. I just didn't want shot. It's not a nice feeling. Win the championship with that shot. Will Peter have a go? Oh, he's left it over the jaws of the pocket. Could that be Peter Ebden's last shot in this championship? He's played for the black. Does he miss the black and get on the pink? 
He flicks the black. He's on it perfectly. <laughs> this is all he needs. Well, incredible. Graham Doss led 15-7. Peter Ebden won the next six Ten. frames. But Dot has gone through the Valley of Doubt and emerged the other side. 13. Well, he kisses the trophy. He's earned it. He's withstood enormous pressure. 17. Peter Ebden made a great fight of it. Graham Dorff, 17. But in the end, Dorff has dashed Ebden's hopes. A marvellous final session. So dramatic. Graham Dorff of Scotland beats Peter Ebden by 18 frames to 14 after an epic battle to win the 888 World Championship. The first thing that springs to mind for me when you talk about Graham Dot is how many players would like to change places with him CV wise. World Championship final three times, converted the World Championship once, world champion winner we're looking at. The other thing that possibly is a strange thing is apart from those three world finals, he's been very rarely as we speak, only once on the winner's rostrum. Why? It's, it's quite hard to believe, really, isn't it? Maybe just uh, for the World Championship, he was just... Horses for courses. Horses for courses, yeah. Just loved the, uh, the longer matches. Very determined player, very hard, like a dog with a bone, like sometimes, you know. Uh, just very tough to beat. Uh, always gave it his all, you know, and uh, hard to break down, you know. And never sort of wilted at the challenge either, you know. He he'd always had a tremendous bottle. Highly underrated, Sean. Yeah. Well, the World Championships is, is, is one of those events unique on its own because it tests you as well. Not just your game and whether you're any good or not and whether you can play attacking and defence. It tests you. And as a character, Graham's as tough as they come. He's got that tenacity. He never knows he's beaten. He never gives up. He only knows it's over when he hears the fat lady singing. And for him, she doesn't sing very loud because he won't give up until the very very last ball is hit and it's for that reason that he does so well in the longer matches <laughs> why can't he win something else i'm not saying he can't but why hasn't he i don't think he loves going away no. for lengths of periods of time and when we do go abroad a sense from graham he wants to go home as soon as yeah, he can he's not a great traveler he's one of those that sort of gets a bit of the you know the homesickness and it, and it affects his game even though the other success did come in china uh, but I, I agree with you, Sean. I think he's more of a home player. He likes to, he likes to playing in the Masters in the UK and and the World Championship, and that's where his best results have come from. Interesting technique, pretty short and sharp, isn't it? Yeah. He also is quite unique in the way that he he actually grips the cue. I think just with two fingers at the back, he he holds right the end of the cue and wraps his two little smaller fingers around nothing, and, and, and he holds it right at the end, which is you know fairly fairly rare. You don't see see that very often. Very short action, very compact, yeah. moves the ball around quite easily. Quite a bit of cue power. I think he's underrated in the cue power department. But when he plays power shots, he has quite a lot of elbow yeah. movement. Yeah. And if that goes wrong, he, he, he can miss. How does he improve? I think he needs to score heavily and score more when he gets his opportunities. Because he does get them. His safety and his tactics generate a lot of chances. Yeah. And if he could put more people away in one visit, It'd be a, it'd be yeah, a handful. There's nothing wrong with his B game. It's just his A game, and we're only saying because there's, a, you know, small margins amongst the top players. Yeah. Is that his A game is not up there with the A game as some of the, the top players, the consistent winners. I think what the boys were saying, I, I certainly always seem to play better at the Crucible than I do everywhere else, but I think it's only because it's the only tournament that we have longer matches. 
So I think maybe if, if we had more tournaments like the World, I know it's not going to happen, but if we did, I probably would have won more. I hate travelling. I think most of the pros know I don't like travelling. It's, um, it's the way the game's going now. I miss the kids and miss everything else, but you need to get on with it. It's my career, that's what I need to do, but I don't enjoy it. My elbow moves out a lot, no matter how well I hit the ball. It's kind of about Alec Higgins. Once I've actually hit the shot, my elbow naturally just drops out, so it's not affecting the shot, although it looks absolutely terrible. I know that myself, being a coach, I know myself that it doesn't look good, but it's after the shot, so it doesn't really affect it. I think Graham, as I say, I don't think he can get it safe, but it's imperative he hits a red here and stops giving those foul points away. Because it's not easy. Oh, I can't believe he's going another way here. But it's not easy to see Ken Doherty getting much more than 30 points. Well, he went to the hit and hope. Oh, he's had a result. <laughs> well, I can only say, well done, Graham Dot And Ken, Ken Doherty must be kicking himself now. What a stroke of luck he had there. Well done. Go on, put that arm up. That wasn't a miss, Neil, that was a malfunction. That's a massive deceleration, which I guess sometimes can happen with Tom. In other words, he just stops hitting. The cue ball is, uh, the cue is going as slowly as, as you like. It's on the, the slow down as he hits the ball and you overcut them. That came from nowhere, but I guess we are getting a little nervy. Can be wrong about things, but this looks to me like a match that could go all the way One. to a decider. Five. That was a nicely played. He's not got an easy. Red, to, Twelve. but he went into them nicely, got a good cannon on the middle red. Definitely not comfortable on this. Think of a shot last night that Ronnie O'Sullivan played, but you could have put Graham back in with the spider. He might have had difficulty with it. Ronnie got the shot horribly wrong himself, 13. which might have been a game changer. Well, maybe there's a plant there which is, would stop him having to go into them. Yeah, the bottom two look fairly well lined up. It's one of those, if you're right behind it, it's it just straightened up a fraction, it's not too difficult. If you're not directly behind them. The shot is more awkward to get right. Well, the fact that he didn't go into the bunch, he must really fancy this. 36. Well, there's two sets of plants potentially there. 37. Obviously, the big thing here is if he's going to play around the table and the blue is not to hit the green or brown on this shot on the way back up. Well, he's come the other side of the table to make sure. That's perfectly played. He's played two absolutely cracking positional shots in this break. The, the red up in bulk to come down for the black to split the reds and then that effort. 
Well, there's plants Four lined cheeks. up from all angles here. The two reds might have gone to the other corner. There's lined up to that one as well. Not over the line yet, and that's not perfect on the blue. Five half centuries for Dot now. 54. A couple of pots away from moving ahead once more. 55. Yes, Graham went 4-3 down, but he's regrouped. Had a little crisis of confidence for a short while. Tom Ford looked the stronger of the two. And now this. Back to the kind of form that got him here in the first place. Great shot. And again, 70 as in previous the previous frame. Another chance for the century. I don't think he's overly worried either way. 75. Yellow out, or does he play him behind it? 73. Not the cannon he was looking for. I think he'll be happy either way here, whether he gets to the century or not. Save all the good shots for the frame that would take him over the winning line. Wow, what a shot, though! Brilliant. Back to his best. Night two. On the cusp of compiling his first century in this tournament. Yes, but he has made a barrage of breaks of Nine, seven. 70, 80, that sort of thing, all the way through to get here. Mark Selby's had his hands on it twice, and Graham Dot. This is his first semi final, so he'd love to add that to his collection. But never discount Graham Dot. Anyone who can make three world finals, winning one of them, is a player to be reckoned with. the brown so it's a decent safety shot now oh, just having a look to see mark there he didn't promote anything towards the corner pocket so he's decided to change his mind and play this red there's a straight push up and down if he wants to Sometimes is the only shot on. He 
It's close. It's close. What hits there? Well, well spotted. There's a few players in the game that I always think are sort of shot makers. They spot certain shots that there's not a lot of danger with them. But if they manage to pot the ball, great value. It. What a chance he's given himself here from nowhere, really. Nine. Oh, the only thing Graham 16. has got to up in this particular match is his cue ball control. Certainly the first match with Stephen Maguire. It was what he struggled with most. 17. And he's one good pot away here on the black. I suppose he could take the blue if he wanted, but one good shot on the black here, and these balls are lovely. It's a great chance. Yes, and you, know, you could say overhit it slightly, but uh, he was concentrating on the pot and he would have been very unlucky not to have been on a red. 25. Yeah, there's just some shots on the table. You'd just sooner play the way you prefer, isn't it? You know, I'm with him there. I'd like to stun that one in and come round the angles. Wasn't one for dropping them in dead weight. That's what he did there. But as you say, John, what a chance he's got now. Opti. This was the one, as I said, it was reds up in the other half of the table, so 51. he didn't need close control. I'll tell you what, he's getting on with it as well. Which is always a sign of Green Dots feeling a bit more confident. Like a lot of players, John, isn't it? You get a little bit bogged down and you start second-guessing yourself when your confidence isn't there. Absolutely, and I think uh, most players, if you saw them practice in their snooker club, you know, they play with a nice rhythm, they wouldn't be taking 30 seconds a shot and the like, although, as I say, Graham, the last few seasons has really picked up his pace. Forty-seven. Yes, you always feel with somebody like Graham, his temperament and tenacity are always going to be there. It's just the level of form he's in. He starts hitting the ball properly, scoring and good cue ball control. He's a match for anybody. Forty-eight. Yes, and as we've said before. He's, he's, he's that type of player, okay, some of his positional shot might be not inch perfect, but he doesn't let it bother him. You know, you see other players, if they're not inch perfect, they do a lot of head shaking and disappointed where they finished. Well, Graham's a bit fortunate to be on the red there. Another 55. looked like being a bad positional shot, but he nudged the red on. 56. Oh, you have to right away for those kisses. That was a beauty. Sixty-two. Well, he's actually overstunned that. This is tight. He may need to play this with a little bit of side. Should have been a lot easier than this. He had quite a gap there. And I'm not too sure this is on. He's taken a lot of time over it. It's very careless, as you can see. Well, he's refusing it. He can pot this red, but it's not as easy as the one he wanted. And it goes. 63. Can you see, John, there's the example. Yep. That's what you were coming up with before and saying. A lot of players have been disappointed not to be pinpoint there, and I'd have been one of them. 
and he's just got down, forgot about it, and knocked the next one in. I made it look easy, and it was a little bit tricky. He's only looking for the colour and one more. Well, if he takes the blue, that will do. I'm a poet, and I didn't know it. But that puts him 68 points in front, 67 remaining. And we've seen frames won from a situation where one snook is required, so he'd like to knock in another red just to dot the I's, cross the T's. Does this red go to the, the left middle? Looks like it does. Excellent. 69. He may have lost the cue ball a couple of times in this, but he's playing real well and he's actually running around the table at the minute. 74. So much for my prediction, it'll be hard for John. This has been fabulous. Well, absolutely, and uh, when Mark Selby played the safety shot, the containing safety, it, it <laughs> seemed as though he'd left everything safe and it looked like it was going to be in to a long, drawn-out tactical battle. This was the shot. He played that, you thought, well, dear me, you go back to your seat and never get out of it again. It's a tough school. 89. 90. He just wants this cue ball to slow down or bounce. 96. It's a little bit tricky. Love to see the century. And I think we will now. 97. We've already had 18 century breaks in this year's Betfair Masters. This for the 19th. Well played, Graham Dot. Absolutely superb. Spotted a double from nowhere, really. Knew if he played it, he'd be on the black. 104. His highest break of the tournament is 111. 107. Well, this has been tremendous first three frames. We had the black ball through in the first. A 79 break. From Mark Selby, and Graham has just equaled his highest break of the tournament, and he'll better it with this blue. Oh, he won't! Oh, he won't! But never mind! He did it with what the Australians call a Nelson. One, one, one. But very well played, Graham Dot, and he leads Mark Selby. Two, one.